Welcome to the NTN Nightly. I'm Nisha Charles. This edition stop stories. The initial phase of the John Compton desilting project nears completion. Another component of the enhanced country poverty assessment project to be rolled out in St. Lucia. A workshop focuses on capacity building and economic opportunities utilizing organic waste. All that plus the NTN Nouvelle Arqueo. The initial phase of the John Compton Dam desilting project is nearing completion. This after a new piece of equipment was purchased to move the process along even further. Once that phase is complete, the desilting process will commence at the John Compton Dam. Phase 1 of the John Compton Dam desilting project includes the construction of the sediment disposal area. That process has been halted in the past due to heavy rainfall which hinders the completion of the starter dike foundation. After much trial and error, a new piece of equipment was bought to accelerate the process. Recently, the Minister for Agriculture, Fisheries, Physical Planning, Natural Resources and Cooperatives, along with WASCO officials, visited the site to see the work being undertaken firsthand. We have tried many initiatives. One is, of course, liming the soil with carb 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 carbon carbonate mm -hmm. that have not worked. The other one was to get a, a tiller and a, a harrow from the Ministry of Agriculture that has not worked. The third one was to cover the, cover the with tarpaulin that have not worked. So we have tried many things to see how we could expedite the process. Um, following all these attempts, it was brought to our attention. There's a, there's a, a piece of equipment that can be purchased, which will assist us in expediting the process. So here it is today, we came here to witness the operation of this piece of equipment and of course to get some feedback as to what our time frame we're looking at to really finish phase one. Project engineer with the project management unit at WASCO, Lee Patrick Lafosse, explained how the piece of equipment will assist in the completion of the project. The main objective is us being able to dry the soil to a certain moisture level to get the requisite, um, to meet the specs so we can continue laying material to finish what we call the starter dike. The issue we've been having with the weather is that even if it rains one day, it takes at least two to three days to get the material dry to the requisite level so that we can proceed with another layer of material. With this equipment, we should be able to eliminate those two days and get another level within the succeeding day. Chairman of Wasco's Board of Directors, Francis Dembo, believes if the weather permits, the starter dike will be completed within 20 days. The next activity is that we have the suction dredge already on the reservoir. That's the John Compton Reservoir. It's already connected to the sediment disposal area. And once um, that day arrives, right, we shall um, start the dredge and um, it will suck silt, siltation, right, at the bottom of the reservoir so that we could. The first priority is to unblock the lower port, which, was the, which is the port that we have been traditionally, you know, um, transmitting water up to the, our cesarean treatment plant. There are two ports. There is a lower port and there is a higher port, right? So once that's done, um, the desilting process will commence at the John Compton Dam. Dembo says that once the desilting process commences at the John Compton Dam, they will be able to extract millions of gallons of water from the dam. From the Government Information Service, I am Raj Varo Lawrence reporting. The International Institute for Cooperation on Agriculture, ICA, has collaborated with the Caribbean Agricultural Research and Development Institute, CADI, to host an organic waste management training. The two-day exercise focuses on capacity building and economic opportunities utilizing organic waste. Anissi Antoine has the details. The workshop is targeted towards institutes responsible for the youth of St. Lucia, including the Ministry of Agriculture, the Solid Waste Management Authority, farmers and entrepreneurs. Greg Rollins is the representative in the Eastern Caribbean states for ICA. This activity again demonstrates our thinking at ICA, that the agricultural sector offers an opportunity as a great problem solving um, sector for a number of of the climate and socio-economic challenges facing small and developing states. 
In this case, we are advocating an approach towards solid waste management that can help protect the environment and public health while creating value for stakeholders of the agricultural sector. Not limited to just composting, but inclusive of bioenergy bio generation, production of biomass, and biomaterial inputs for industrial and agricultural applications, as well as the creation of biofuels, this field offers a number of entry points along the value chain for prospecting entrepreneurs. Rawlin noted that the motto for the delegation in St. Lucia is people-focused development. The objective of this initiative is therefore to strengthen the resilience of the economies through the adoption of innovative technologies and sustainable waste management systems in the Caribbean region. Dr. Ambimbola Abiola, technical specialist and facilitator of the workshop, gave an overview of the nature of the program. In terms of the, of the, of the content, uh, I am saying that so we inten our intention is to look at the whole area of uh, bio-wastes, okay? Initially, look at the different options for bio-waste for management, and then we will later focus on composting. We are going to look at the data that you have for the country, the data that we have for the region, as well as some international information, and see where we are here in St. Lucia. The key beneficiary states of the training includes St. Lucia, Belize, Jamaica, the Bahamas, Trinidad and Tobago, and Guyana. From the Government Information Service, I am Anisia Antoine reporting. The Ministry of Equity, Social Justice, Local Government and Empowerment is preparing to roll out its participatory poverty assessment as part of the Enhanced Country Poverty Assessment Project, which is being administered through the OECS Commission. Stakeholders recently met in St. Lucia to prepare for its implementation. The Enhanced Country Poverty Assessment Project is a qualitative and quantitative study of living conditions. The project is being funded by the Caribbean Development Bank and administered across the OECS through the OECS Commission. In 2016, a component of that project, the Survey on Living Conditions, was conducted in St. Lucia. It is the main quantitative assessment that generates indicators of poverty and vulnerability. But there are other aspects that are needed for the completion of the assessment project. Recently, the OECS Commission engaged with officials from the Ministry of Equity, Social Justice, Local Government and Empowerment to plan and prepare for the rollout of these other components, in particular, the participatory poverty assessment. Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Equity, Social Justice, Local Government and Empowerment, Velda Joseph, says this step provides a qualitative focus of poverty from the perspective of specific groups of persons within the population. That is important for us because we are now engaged in a broader reform of social protection and we believe that the opportunity now to roll out that initiative will provide complementary data to inform the decisions of the ministry as we engage in this social protection reform. Um, ideally for us, we want to look at the social protection agenda in St. Lucia on a comprehensive basis. And we want to make sure that all of the initiatives that the ministry will be engaged in um, over the coming months and years would lend itself to a reform that would benefit our beneficiaries and that is the, the vulnerable among us. The OECS Commission has pledged its technical support to the implementation process. The Permanent Secretary is confident that the surveys will be implemented shortly. So we are looking to bring on board a technical consultant who will assist us in uh, identifying the resources and bringing together the various aspects and the various activities that need to be undertaken. Um, we do have some in-house capacity that will support that technical um, consultant but as of now we are actually uh, detailing the training plan we are in the process of making sure that we identify the relevant communities that will be participating in the survey 
we will be re-engaging the national assessment team to make sure that they are an integral part of the process and beyond that we will simply ensure that we roll out the training and that we are able to um, facilitate the field work. Other components of the poverty assessment project include the institutional analysis, the macro socio-economic assessment and the poverty and vulnerability mapping exercise. And this is the NTN Nightly. We'll be back in a moment. The Ministry of Tourism is working alongside the Department of Statistics to develop St. Lucia's Tourism Satellite Account, TSA. The Tourism Satellite Account is an internationally established method of measuring the direct contributions of tourism to our national economy. This will help the government in developing effective policy for the industry. If you are in the business of tourism, the ministry needs your help in collecting critical data necessary for this tourism satellite account. Let's all help to develop and improve our economy. All tourism-related establishments are asked to contact the ministry at 468-5393 before Friday, the 28th of February, for further information specific to their business. Welcome back. Under the theme, Renewal of Love, the Ministry of Commerce held its Valentine's Day showcase. The exhibition was an opportunity to provide clients with more avenues to promote and market their businesses and services. Janelle Norville reports. Touting the success of last year's showcase, the Small Enterprise Development Unit's Business Development Officer in the Ministry of Commerce, Industry, Investment, Enterprise Development and Consumer Affairs, Heidi Alcindor, indicated that this year even more entrepreneurs were featured. The Business Development Officer urged the public to support local. We'd like to encourage all persons to support our local entrepreneurs. When we go into the supermarket, there is a lot of potential and the quality of the products are actually way better than what you would get internationally. We just need to give them a chance and we, I am sure that we, they will be very satisfied. We have it all here. We have everything you could name being produced locally. We just need to give the entrepreneurs a chance, give it a try and have an open mind. And I think we could boom in the commerce industry. The showcase consisted of a wide range of products and services, including wines and tea. We make 100% local teas. We make um, all the traditional teas, all the known teas, bay leaf, lower jet, we make these teas. But we make them in a specific way. We dry them with a natural drying process to maintain the flavors. Our main thing is about the flavor and the benefits of the herbs is being preserved. And so we make we use 100% um, natural products. Our our tea bags are oxygen bleach, so there is no chemical processing. So everything you get is 100% natural and local. And we serve them in these. Uh, our packaging is dual packaging, so we have an outer envelope to keep the, 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 the goodness, and we also have also a seal. So the idea this is going to last up to four years in proper storage. I am into the production of local wines. Um, local brooms, more back, and um, packaging the more back, um, dry it up and then sell to the supermarkets. But my most popular product is the wine, and it is now known as the Latin is the head, the leading one. Most people know it as the, all my products, they even consider me as the local Latin boy, uh, Latin guy. The feedback has been good so far, you know. From last, from last year, and so it's been really good. Uh, the public favorite is the pomegranate passion. Yes, this goes really, really well. I can never have one for it to stay. It's always, whenever it's, it's always finishing, so yes. Photography services and beauty products and services will also be showcased. We offer photography weddings, photo shoots, birthdays, commercial, um, anything basically have to do with photography. We try to do our best to at least meet the needs of the clients. So we just try to make them look a little more natural, just giving a little extra flavor, a little something different, you understand? Today I am showcasing my makeup, because I do makeup, um, eyebrow shaping, if you want to do your eyeshadow, or just get your eyebrow filled in, I'm doing that today. Uh, but my business does um, com um, include sewing, so I do sewing services, garment creation, headpieces, 
that type of thing. So Love and Spice basically caters for everyone. We do natural, holistic body care products, right? It, it started through a labor of love where we were first to begin Amarastafarian. So we could not get natural, organic products that were cruelty free without chemicals for our, for our skin. So it, I was forced now to stay and go into myself and bring out the creativity that is within me. So through that came the, through that came the products. Love and Spice products include body oils and butters and hair and skin products. Sweets and treats were in abundance and included island pops and Celine's cake making and decorating, offering a variety of cakes. Lee's Sweet Treats is a local confectionery and it's what we grew up on. We have tamarind balls, fudge, seaweed jam or you could say gooseberry jam which is the name that is known as. We also have coconut balls. But what we try to do is have a variety. Uh, so with the seaweed jam, we have the rum and the wine infused. Also with the, co the tamarind balls, we do spicy, regular and rum. Also coconut balls, we have rum and the regular. With the fudge, we have a really large variety, such as ginger with turmeric, ginger mint, peanuts, chocolate. So we do a variety of fudge. And uh, we have different sizes with the containers. We also have um, ready to travel packs, if you may say, because the waste package is travel ready. Jewelry, flowers, and personalized gifts offered specialized gifts and trinkets. With Zinovations, we create handmade greeting cards, and our vision is to really help persons express themselves differently. So if you're looking for a card to, or you want to go all out to give somebody something special and different, we are the persons to contact. Um, you can certainly reach me on Instagram at Zinovations, and that's Z-N-N-O-V-A-T-I-O-N-S. Um, I'm also on Facebook as well, so you can find us on Facebook at Zinovations. Or you can contact me at telephone number 519-0567. So come with your ideas, if you have any words, special words you want to say to that special someone, we are the persons and we'll take care of that for you. This is Poetry Kisses, the home of handmade wearable art. I specialize in unique, distinctive statement pieces of jewelry that speaks to the wearer, it speaks about the wearer, and it makes a statement about who you are and what you're basically all about. We use a lot of local material, locally sourced material, natural, skin-friendly material as well, and a lot of handmade shell. We use um, clay beads and seeds, fabric as well, so it's very skin-friendly for people with sensitive skin as well. They're awesome statement pieces for the daring, bold individual. So that's pretty much basically what we're about. Um, as well, I do visual arts as well, I paint. And so I've tried to marry the two in taking my paintings and putting them into pendants, into charm bracelets, and making them as personalized as possible. We do wedding, funeral, birthdays, anniversary, name it with it. My pieces are self-inspired. So I, yes, I may visit the internet, but it's mostly to perfect my craft. So if I'm doing a link and I want to get a better way to do a link or an easier way to do the link, then I would go onto the internet. But my pieces are solely self-inspired. So I will look at materials and I will see exactly what I'm going to do. And as a result of that, I create one of a kind in my jewelry. The showcase was held at Constitution Park on the 12th of February 2020. Individuals interested in any of the products or services at the showcase are asked to contact the Ministry of Commerce, Industry, Investment, Enterprise Development and Consumer Affairs Small Enterprise Development Unit, SEDU. For the Government Information Service, I am Janelle Norville. And stay with the NTN Nightly. Up next is Primus Hutchinson with the NTN Nouvelle Arqueo.
St. Lucia. Are, are, are you ready for the National Independence Parade? Celebrate our independence in a grand way this February 22nd, starting at the Sab in VG. Come experience a true St. Lucian spectacle with amazing floats, traditional dancers, musicians, and more. Led by the Royal St. Lucia Police Force and include communities, ministries, and business houses. Join in the excitement and let's show the best of St. Lucia. Now is the time. Let's do this together. Welcome back. We join Primus Hutchinson for the NTN Nouvelle en Creole. Merci, Hôtel Nisha. Merci, Madame Department, qui n'est pas responsable pour l'information au gouvernement de la GIS, au CMB Télévision Nationale, PIA NTN, qui a posé la Nouvelle en Creole. Posé la Primus Hutchinson. Autorité de conservation nationale, NCA, en CMB Autorité de ménagement Zordi en PIA, National Trust, Hotel Landings, Alexander's Grand, j'ai d'accord avec mes têtes ensemble pour déclarer que la situation côté de monde qui a jeté Zordi va et va sur un mauvais dommage pour le business touriste, l'environnement et la santé pays généralement. J'ai eu pour NCA, Mme Jacinta Lee, très contrôlé et puis la situation ça là, parce que il n'y a pas longtemps yo fait un grand appel pour que le public ait un bout de déposer les ordres de la MPA. Madame Lee, par sa comprendre que cette lycée, ça c'est une quantité sans naturel pour le PIA. Et quand j'ai eu un NCA, il a dit qu'il a trouvé non différents business en parmi ces ordres là et qu'il a fait contact et puis c'est compagnie ça là qui est coupable, coupable pour mal porter ça là. En parmi ces ordres qui ont sa liberté PIA, c'est le vieux conteneur. Musique attique des ordi qui comble avec ordi des matériaux pour bâtir qui pas des services encore et que ces ordi ont vieux établissement qui croise tout ça au Sahara à sous yon la place à bien place privée près de Jonathan Island. Malgré l'autorité a pas contrôle à sous propriété qui privée, organisation qui a fait un appel pour yon qui coupable pour de bout action ça là qui compte loi PIA et déposer ces ordres à la place officielle pour jeter ces ordres à cette liste. Ça, c'est un déglo. J'ai vu pour l'autorité de ménagement des ordres, Marie Dalson, vêtue qui n'est pas de monde qui trouvé coupable en situation de ça, qui a trouvé coordonné 5 000 dollars, qui a souhaité payer et bien nettoyer mal propre. Alors, il a fait un grand appel pour yon qui coupable pour de bout immédiatement. Melinda Murray, Hod National Trust, qui a dit que si on a conduit l'auto en route, le premier chose qu'il a fait, c'est que le chemin, c'est l'hôtel, avec Pigeon Island, c'est ce qu'il a dit. Il dit que c'est un embarrassement et que ça a continué, ça a contrôlé tout le monde. Le représentant du Parlement pour Gozile, Honorable Leonard Montout, a dit que ce n'est pas seulement un route qui a été fait, mais aussi un plaisir qui a été fait en plusieurs côtés de la commune Gozile. Alors, il a plaidé pour le même public pour faire ça qui doit être pour sauver l'environnement et santé cette liste généralement. Le représentant de Gozile a conseillé que ces gens qui ont ces problèmes pour déposer les ordres, ils ont visité l'autorité pour faire une assistance. Ils ont aussi fait des suggestions pour placer des caméras pour que ces gens qui ont continué à vivre la petite salle, à vivre l'activité salle, et puis les officiers ont trouvé eux. Pinio sérieusement. L'année plan aussi pour l'année en grand nettoyage le 29 février 2002. Il y a une grande discussion de près coup le 7 février côté comité pour sécurité des santé nationale et puis premier ministre honorable Alain Chasne pour tenir public là au courant et puis mauvais maladie corona attention c'était à sous produit qui est sorti en pays chine. Ce qui a concerné cette liste, c'est viande et produits pressant en Chine. Chef officier de santé des animaux, Dr. Aurea King Snack, explique que cette liste n'est pas une pièce d'agrément et puis Chine concerné viande. Hot pays qui a ça c'est hot pays qui a tué cette liste. Un officier la douane déclarait aussi que la douane 
qu'à continuer pour placer restriction à ce et qu'on s'est examiné toute viande hot pêche pour faire cette um, santé pays en protection pour raison ça là toute viande ni pour passer en bas examination hot ministère de l'agriculture depuis le 9 février ou à pour qu'a montré qui la jani plus que 37000 cas de maladie corona au lieu la terre total en total de 812 monde qui j'ai trouvé la mort en cause maladie ça là alors département santé ca conseil public là pour continuer suivre ces recommandations qui en place qu'on laver la main et puis ça avoir glo et servir chimique pour préserver ça c'est préserver et nettoyer la main Alliance française de cette ci qui a tenu en conférence pour les mêmes médias plus à moins ça là conférence là qui a pour tuer information à ce programme régional des CARICOM pour coopération à éducation culture et façon pour découvrir ressources nouveaux en business c'était une initiative qui était établie l'année passée pour comme ça là c'est une qui était formé côté la sani en rangement car embrasser toute agence en somme qui engagé à business en juin pour encourager plus mobilisation des business en juin et pour finette oui juin ça ouvert plus grand pour une alerte éclaté à généralement alliance française qu'a profité de l'occasion pour présenter plan pour l'année ça là pas seulement pour cette ci mais l'autre même alliance française à caricom organisation alliance française au niveau la terre qu'a poussé valeur des affaires de francophonie en diverses façons principalement pour parler et apprendre plusieurs langages et diverses cultures c'est un mouvement qui a poussé aussi pour y en trouver éducation à des haut degré sans payer pour développer échange et supporter et publicité pour culture et langage en tout pays où je vois France ça là qui prend cours le 25 février à 11h au matin en pyramide là en pointe sur affaire Et c'est comme ça nous avons votre nouvelle là. Nous avons remercié autant pour regarder. Nous avons une invitation pour que je puisse me considérer. Quand c'est la vie, nous avons une autre nouvelle à Kouéol. Après ça, nous avons une invitation pour que je puisse me considérer. Merci à Pil Primus. Et ici, nous avons une autre chose qui nous a fait. Weather-wise. Partly cloudy, hazy et brisé, becoming cloudy à times avec quelques scattered showers. The Atlantic high pressure system will continue to generate moderate to brisk easterly winds and rough seas around the eastern Caribbean. An area of Saharan dust haze will continue to cause a reduction in visibility over our region for the next couple of days. Weak unstable conditions in the atmosphere over the Lesser Antilles will cause some scattered showers to develop over the islands during the next 24 hours. The tide for Castries Harbour was low at 12.57 p.m. and is high at present. The tide for Vieux-Fort Bay was low at 2.24 p.m. and will be high again at 8.31 p.m. The seas locally rough with waves and northerly to northeasterly swells 6 to 9 feet or 1.8 to 2.7 meters. Small craft operators and sea bathers are advised to exercise extreme caution due to brisk winds and rough seas. The sun will rise Friday at 6.27 a.m. And that brings us to the end of the NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I'm Nisha Charles.